Hi folks, David Weber here from NetGate. I wanted to talk with you a bit about Transit VPC and why Tensor is a great solution to some interesting problems. So let's talk about the cloud. And just to be sure we're on the same page, this is the Amazon cloud. So Amazon has a thing they call the VPC or virtual private cloud, which is really where the whole cloud thing started to get interesting because a VPC is more than just a virtual machine. It's a complete virtual network where you can deploy complex applications in the cloud. So let's call this first one in our diagram VPC A. And since you want to run your corporate apps inside of your VPC, the whole reason for setting it up, you'll want a secure network connection, a site-to-site -site VPN that connects that VPC to your data center. All of this is technology that our friends at Amazon provide, and it works really well. So at this point, you've got apps running in your VPC, and it's beautiful. But there's another team, or another geo, or another part of the org, whatever, that also needs a VPC. So you add another one, and this one's VPC B, just so we can keep track, and you add a VPN connector to that VPC. Now you have a couple of VPCs in AWS, and they're both com hosting company apps, and they need to exchange data with one another. Oops. Well, if you route that traffic back to the company, then up to AWS again, it could really chew up bandwidth, which you're paying for. So you could connect the two VPCs together, right? Amazon calls that VPC peering. Well, that would be great, except that's one of the limitations Amazon imposes on VPC peering. If your VPC uses Amazon's VPN connector to connect back to your corporate network, then it can't be in a peer relationship. Hmm, our first speed bump. Well, okay, let's keep this one in mind and move on. So the peering connection is out. That means if you need to exchange data between the two VPCs, it has to be routed back through your company network. In the meantime, you have another team that wants their own VPC. And rather than saying VPC C over and over again, I'm just gonna call all the other ones VPC N. And remember that for each of these new VPCs, you'll need another VPN connection. So this is where the story really begins. We've, we've done the background stuff. Now we're working with three or more VPCs, exchanging data and connecting back to corporate. First, the obvious observation is if you have a lot of VPCs set up like this, you probably have a lot of VPN connections to maintain. Those are site-to-site -site links that shouldn't need a whole lot of maintenance, but you're still shipping traffic and paying for bandwidth back and forth to your network. If you want those VPCs to exchange data, wouldn't it be simpler if they could talk to one another within the Amazon cloud, kind of like this? Well, rather than bemoan the fact that it doesn't work, let's take a look at a configuration that could. So here's an example configuration you could set up with Tensor. You connect your VPCs to one another with Tensor and establish a central VPN link back to your corporate network, all from the same product. Tensor routes traffic between VPCs and maintains IPsec VPN endpoints, both in the cloud and in your data center, or you could use a standard IPsec capable router back at corporate. And a little bit more about Tensor before we move on here. Uh, Tensor is a high-speed packet processing engine. It's implemented in software. In simple terms, that means it's a router. It's both more and less than the routers you may have seen before though. First off, tensor scales, 1 gig, 10 gig, 25, 100 gig, and more. The only question you need to answer is how many cores to use. Bandwidth scales linearly with cores. Right at this moment, that's not really a big deal on Amazon because there are limits to the bandwidth you can get between VPCs, but it won't be that way forever. Amazon announced EC2 instances with 25 gig network adapters last year. How long do you think it'll be before they enable that kind of bandwidth between VPCs? Second, Tensor is built for management in the modern world. All of the functionality is available via the REST API. Oh, and every bit of that functionality is also available via the command line. So keyboard jockeys and automation wizards are welcome here. So let's get back to it and talk a little bit about the problems you could solve with Tensor as a VPC transit solution. 
Let's build out the same environment as before, but this time we'll use Tensor to do it. So let's connect your corporate data center to that first VPC. And note that Tensor can be run in your VPC as an Amazon machine instance or an AMI. It can also run in your data center as either a VM or on bare metal. So Tensor is what's referred to as a vRouter or virtual router. Remember when I said it's just software? Really the benefit there is that it runs anywhere. So as you add VPCs, you just spin up a Tensor instance in each one. Tensor can route traffic between your VPCs and back to corporate. You decide how many VPCs you'll need, just spin up a new Tensor vRouter in each one. And, you know, I mentioned manageability. Well, if you're a command line fan, then you're going to like Tensor. It was ground, designed from the ground up to be managed, but sometimes management is more than just the CLI. With the Tensor API, you can do everything that's possible with the CLI, but it's programmable, which means automation and orchestration across multiple Tensor instances programmatically. But let's get back to our example. We're going to use the API to set up VPC B as our VPN gateway with all the other instances connecting back through it. This is the sort of thing you can script or automate with your network automation, DevOps, or change management systems. Oh, and you see the lock icon there? The one that shows you have a VPN from VPC B back to your data center? You can just as easily set that up between VPCs. That's Tensor encrypted peering, and it's part of the package. No extra cost or complexity. And this is a basic hub and spoke archi architecture implemented with Tensor. It's a common VPC transit architecture. In fact, for some vendors, this is all they support. But Tensor also gives you options. You could cross-connect your VPCs. Or you could set up a transit gateway, a VPC that serves the needs of all your VPCs that need to connect back to corporate. That way, if you need more VPCs in the future, you have the flexibility to connect them as well. So these are just a few of the ways to handle this set of problems. And you know the market isn't standing still, so things will change. We'll keep updating things on our side, and I'd appreciate it if you would let us know when you find new and interesting problems. We like interesting problems.